Good morning and welcome to another episode of Tuesday Tour. It's John Sauter with April Holeider behind the camera from your Purdue Alumni Association uh, coming to you today from the village on State Street just off campus about a half block from campus as we talk about the historical side of this this side of campus and starting in front of one of the most historic buildings and many of you recognize it it's Harry's you know April and I are always looking for ideas about things to kind of talk about and celebrate and don't you know two weeks ago in the in the uh, exponent front page Harry's chocolate shop celebrates its 100th so we thought why not why not so we're going to talk a little bit about Harry's today varsity apartments and the university bookstore I suspect an area that most all alumni have walked through at one time or another so Harry's as you can see from the sign Harry's uh, goes way back to 1919 when it actually was a chocolate shop. It actually was not here its original location. It was actually out in town. And for those of you who, uh, who know the streets a little bit, at the corner of Lindbergh and Salisbury, that's where Harry's Chocolate Shop was in 1919. Harry Merrick Sr. started it. Later, Harry Merrick Jr. would take over uh, the chocolate shop. Uh, and it stayed there until around 1933 or so when it moved here. So let me put that in perspective for you. Uh, Edward Elliott is our president in 1922. R.B. Stewart came in 1925. The university is really starting to percolate. The Union Building opens up in 1924. Prohibition, however, was right there from 1920 to 1933. So Harry's was a chocolate shop, but he saw this location. The Union already had a sweet shop, so he thought maybe this is the time to jump on the uh, bandwagon. Uh, a prohibition being over. In fact, they got the first liquor license in West Lafayette. And so he opened up the chocolate shop, kept the name, but decided to serve beer. And that's what he's been doing ever since. So no, it was not a speakeasy. No, there were not clever words used to get into it, anything like that. He just realized that you could probably make a better living off selling beer than chocolate. And I think he was right on that count. So 1933, it, it was located here. Harry Merrick Jr. took it over in 1977. Herschel Cook uh, took it over and he and his wife Mary run it to this day in this location. Just an iconic place on campus that many folks come back to visit. Uh, it opens up at 11. This is a recording and so it's earlier than 11. It opens up at 11 every morning except for those of you who know for breakfast club mornings. The mornings of football games it looks like a Halloween costume party down here as people are in line waiting to get in around 7 a.m. Uh, to get into Harry's. And uh, again, just an iconic place on campus. Um, you can see your name perhaps. I've asked April, she claims her name is not written on any wall. A lot of names on the walls. In fact, they don't, they really discourage you from writing names anymore on the wall. Uh, a lot of pictures inside and they'll put up pictures but you have to run those through uh, Herschel and Mary Cook. A lot of pictures on the outside, actually a lot of pictures of military folks here at the entrance. There's a great sign from Prohibition that says, we want beer. I mean, there's just a lot of unique things uh, uh, about this place. I have to admit, I come here once a semester for our bowl of chili. I come here with some retired colleagues. What better place to uh, kind of meet and reminisce and talk about the things that are going on. Now, you can still share pictures and even stories by going to Harry's website. They've got an excellent website that they maintain and they're always looking for stories and photographs of people all over the world in war zones or wherever it might be with the Harry's Chocolate Shop shirt on that they'll be happy to post on their website for you. So, so you may want to do that. So we're going to progress down the street just a little bit and talk about the village uh, uh, area uh, just off campus. In fact, this whole area uh, this has really been a part of Purdue. In fact, I have a couple of pictures I want to show. Um, the first one at the top is the, uh, it's actually the trolley. So the trolley used, this is down near the corner, used to actually come up right through here and drop students off. This is from the, uh, from the 20s or so, uh, when the trolley was uh, still running. The lower picture is actually from the 1960s, 1962. And in fact, if you look at this picture, and we're going to put April at risk and walk her out on the street here. If you look at this picture and then you look at this view, that's the actual building right there. So the building with the peak roof, that's Geisler's menswear, there's Rexall Drugs. You can look down here and see where uh, the church is and the corner building. Um, 
in, in the village, in the village, uh, still uh, well utilized by students. We'll walk across the street just for a moment. We got the light, and uh, we'll come up on uh, University Apartment or Varsity Apartments. Varsity Apartments. Varsity Apartments actually opened up in 1928, so they go way back about this same time. Harry's gets here in 33. 33 Varsity Apartments are already here. Varsity Apartments actually have about 53 units for students. Um, it is not air conditioned. You can get a window air conditioner if you want it. Uh, but what a prime location uh, to be living close to campus. Highly sought after places. Um, it's a historically preserved building, so they have a nice plaque. And in fact, there's quite a few stories. The apartments, when they were first built, actually used to have little doors um, at about floor level. And that's where the milkman would come and put the milk outside and the owners of the apartment would actually reach through and get their milk in in the morning. Uh, in Varsity Apartments. Just across the alley is University Bookstore, a great storied history. 1939, it actually was established. Uh, Doc Eppel was the fellow who actually got it established. Prime, prime location for the University Bookstore. Uh, I have one Doc Eppel story and that is I met him. Uh, about 25 years ago, of all places, I'm in Maui, Hawaii, up at Haleakala Extinct Volcano at 4 in the morning. I haul the family up there to watch the sun come up, and I'm standing next to this guy and having a chat, and lo and behold, Doc Apple, who owned University Bookstore. Turns out Doc loves Hawaii, loves Maui, and he would go there all the time. He eventually sold the store to a fellow named Tom Fry, and he runs the store now. It's a uh, it's pretty well known because in 1942, Doc Apple envisioned having a Purdue Pete. He actually came up with the name and actually had the original design. And so in concert with athletics, they use this in a lot of their apparel uh, in athletics. But they came up with the concept of Purdue Pete. And as you true Boilermakers know, it's the Boilermaker Special that's our mascot and not Purdue Pete. That might have something to do with University Bookstore. Great bookstore. Highly recommended for apparel uh, and, and, uh, and uh, a wide variety of things. Of course, books you know, are offered there also. Um, but it's really been a part of Purdue. They have tried to expand. They've actually lowered the basement. They actually dug out the basement and lowered the basement eight feet for more storage room. Um, but they do a lot of uh, uh, in-kind work with uh, athletics, with the Alumni Association uh, in, in University Bookstore, all a part of this kind of historic walk right along here. Um, what we finish up today, we've come from the old to the very new. And so we look across the street, here's our newest gateway arch at the corner of, of, uh, of, of Grant and State Street. This just opened up this past May of 2019. So from 1919 to 2019, 100 years worth right here uh, in this little stretch. It's become an iconic place on campus for you to uh, uh, have your picture taken at commencement there's a line of people in caps and gowns so if you haven't been back to campus for a while you need to come back visit harry's for just a bowl of chili mind you and then come up here have a picture taken and uh, restore those memories so uh, that's it for today we just wanted to have a brief look at the village area talk to you about some of the buildings and uh, april and i just uh, both hope that we have rekindled your memories about Purdue and you'll want to come back and visit real soon. And we hope you do and maybe visit with us. So on behalf of April and myself, thanks for watching. Hail Purdue.